For this video, I'll be working through the Level 3 2017 Waves Exam, Question 3. Question 3. Priya Prior wants to measure the wavelength of a green laser. She shines a laser beam through a diffraction grating. She sees an interference pattern on the wall behind the diffraction grating. As shown in the photograph, the slits in the diffraction grating are 2 micrometers apart. The angle between the central antinodal line and the first nodal antinodal line is 15.4 degrees. Show that the wavelength of the green laser is 5.31 times 10 to the negative 17 meters. So because it's a diffraction grating, you are going to have to use on your waves formula sheet the d sine theta equals n lambda. So we'll just write that out. D, can we see that? Oh, we can. Sine theta is equal to n lambda. Move that up a bit. Um, in other words, lambda is equal to uh, just d sine theta divided by n, which is going to be equal to 2.00 times 10 to the negative 6 times sine, was it 15.4? 15.4 divided by, right, this, the central nodal line is n equals 0, then it goes 1 for an antinode, 2 for an antinode, and then one for an antinode and two for an antinode. It's a symmetrical system, so you can just make it ones and twos. If it's right here, this is exactly between the central antinode and the next antinode, you'd call it the uh, nodal spot where there's essentially no light. Um, that is equal to a half, and then that would imply this is equal to this spot here is one. I'll just call it three over two because that's one and a half. Um, just so we can sort of get the order of things. So, the angle between the central angle uh, antinodal line, which is zero, and the first nodal line is 15.4 degrees. That means n is equal to one because we're at this point here. So it's always measured from the center to there, so to divide it by one, and that does in fact equal 531 nanometers. Um, 3SF, because everything else is in 3SF, and use nanometers because lasers are always in nanometers. Um, they've got it like that, but whatever. It's actually neater and far better to have it like that. And just whilst we're here, 2 micrometers is actually equal to 2,000 nanometers because we just shift it three zeros across, so it's 2,000 nanometers. We'll need to use this soon. Right, explain what causes the bright spot at the first antinode. In other words, the four, first order maximum, which is that one there. So I'm going to pause the video, write the answer, and then... And go through it. All right. So I've said the light passes through the through the grating and diffracts. That's what light does when it goes through a grating. The diffracted waves interfere. That's also what they do. At the first order maximum, the path difference between the light is one full wavelength. This causes constructive interference, and the bright spot is observed. So the central maxima, the path difference from one side of the slit, or from one gap in the slit to the other gap in the slit is there is no path difference. So if you have white light, there's no path difference between so all the paths wherever you go on any of the slits is the same distance to that spot. So there's the waves all arrive in the same phase that they were originally in. Um, there's no out of phase or in phase part of the wave. So you get a central maxima. So if there's a coloured laser, so, well not there's no such thing as a coloured laser, but if this is white light, you have a white spot in the middle because the path difference is zero. For the first order maximum, or the first antinode that you can see, that's when the path difference is one whole wave. So half a wave's path difference means your waves are 180 degrees out of phase, which means you'll get deconstructive interference. So that's what happens when you get these antinodal lines right about here. So with the dark spots, in other words. And I mean nodal lines for no light. Um, and then, so for this out, this spot out here, that's a path difference of two whole wavelengths between uh, between one side of the slit and the other side of the slit. So you can think of this as just a double slit, and then you can extrapolate from there. But from a double slit with two holes, the light will go from one side to the air, and then the other, or from one slit to the air and the other slit to the air. And if it's two wavelengths, you're on to the second order maximum. 
three wavelengths, third order maximum, four wavelengths, so on and so forth, until you get to 90 degrees. Right, the picture on page seven shows the pattern seen with the green laser. Draw the pattern you'd expect with the red laser and explain why it's different to the green laser. So we have a green laser over here. That's the uh, laser pattern. You probably don't have this if you've copied this online. This is actually an actual exam booklet that I pinched at the end of the year. Um, so we'll just have a brief look at red light. We see that red light has a lower frequency. So lower frequency means higher wavelength. Wavelength, yep. Green has a wavelength of 531. Red, typically speaking, if you ever buy like a red wave, or if you used to be able to buy them, you can buy them on the AliExpress and you can sort of smuggle them to the country. They don't get picked up from uh, customs that often. They're usually 631. And you can buy cheap less than five, or less than two milliwatts um, at your random places. Um, so they're, yeah, they're usually 631. So green light, 531. Red light, 631. The slit spacing is 2000. So the closer you are, the closer your wavelength, you remember this from level two waves, the closer, closer the wavelength is to the spacing, the greater the diffraction, which means the further apart your dots are. So here's our first dot, which is still going to be, it's still got the path difference, you'll still have a dot in the middle. The second dot is going to be further apart, and the third dot even further. And then symmetrically we keep it the same because it is a symmetrical system. Right, so I'm going to pause the video, just write out my answer, and then I'll discuss it. Right, so I've said red has a lower frequency, thus higher wavelength. The increased wavelength is closer to the split, say, split, slit spacing of 2,000 nanometers, which increases the size of the diffraction pattern. You can also conversely put the formula, so theta is equal to sine inverse um, n lambda divided by the distance, um, as lambda increases, uh, just put it yes, so does theta. There we go. So that's a mathematical way to show it. Right, next question. Priya show, shines white light through another diffraction grading. There are three complete spectra of visible. We'll just quickly highlight that it's white light, so it contains all the colours. Three complete spectra of visible light produced each side of the an central antinodal line. Calculate the maximum slit separation of this diffraction grating. A minimum, minimum slit, so sorry, slit separation. Explain your reasoning. Frequency of violet light is that. Frequency of red light is that. Right, so we know red light diffracts more from the get the go because we figured that up here. So in other words, red light is going to be... So we'll just write that there. Red light... GHT diffracts more. Right, so I said red light diffracts more than violet, so red is the boundary condition. This is because this is because the wavelength of red is greater than the wavelength of violet. And we can show that quickly. We'll be able to figure out actually what what frequency they're using for red light. So we've got lambda is equal to oh, what am I doing? Lambda is equal to the velocity over the frequency, that's just the wave, wave equation rearranged, V equals F lambda, just rearranged for the wavelength, I just moved underneath, well I just moved the frequency underneath and get left with that, and that is going to be equal to 3.00 times 10 to the 8, that's the speed of light, divided by what's the frequency, 4.3 to the 14, 0.3 times 10 to the 14, I'm just doing it messily because I just want to figure out what the number is, it is 6, Nine seven nanometers, and that seems legit. Close enough to six hundred. You can get some lasers, some lasers that are six fifty. This is probably getting close to infrared, but just whatever. Right. So, whew, maximum slit separation. So, if you could think of this, oh, is it going to be? I'm trying to do a wee, like a laser thing here. Here's my wee laser. You could have a flat screen. Just I'll do a flat screen like that there. But you could also have a circular screen that goes like this. And it'd be a whole lot easier to see all your wave, all your like diffracted wave dots on the circular screen. And the maximum you can possibly get to 
is going to be 90 degrees. So that's you could have a, an auto maximum way out here at 90 degrees. If you bring your slits too close together, what happens is a slit size, this here gets very, very close to the size of the wavelength. So as, if this gets, as this number here is 2,000 nanometers, gets close and closer to 697, the diffraction increases, increases, increases. Um, when they become almost the same, it's the diffraction is the most. And when this number gets smaller than this number, no light gets through. And that's kind of a weird and wacky thing. Um, that no light gets through, even though there are gaps. Um, radio. So we need to rearrange theta is going to be equal to 90 degrees, so 90 degrees for max. And we'll just rearrange the spacing as n lambda divided by sine theta. I just rearranged the equation from over the page. Um, oh, what are we going to have? Three. There are three complete spectra of visible light produced on each side. So we're going to have to have n is equal to 3. Equal to 3. Because it's saying there are three auto maximums available. So 3 times, we're going to use red light, so it's going to be 697. 9, 7 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by sine 90, which is just 1. That gives me 2.09 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, or, oh, how do I write that, 2,090 nanometers, nanometers, there we go, so, can you see that, it can't be, be any less than 2,090 nanometers, which is pretty similar to the previous diffraction grading, but this time we're using red light, which diffracts a lot more than green.